Hey everybody, this is Matt Atkinson, and you're watching Ford Gettysburg with Aaron Smith. How's it going everybody? Aaron Smith here for Forward Gettysburg and thank you guys so, so much for joining me. I am coming to you from one of the most neglected spots by visitors here at the Gettysburg National Military Park. I am at Benners Hill, an important spot here in the wide scope of things of the Battle of Gettysburg. But most visitors don't make their way out here. They might see the sign off of Routes 116 Hanover Road, they'll say, huh, and keep on driving. Those that come by here, they'll drive down this single wide road. They'll come around to the turnaround, make their way right back out to the Hanover Road. But we are here to explore this area. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history of what happened here. And I'm gonna show you guys some awesome landmarks you can see here from this position. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video, and let's explore together Benner's Hill. So the first thing that I notice about Benner's Hill every time I come up here is the absolute beautiful view of the Gettysburg skyline, if you want to call it that, and the view of South Mountain in the distance. Here we can see the entire town of Gettysburg laid out before us. We can make out where the middle school is, the playing fields for the middle school. You can see the spire of the historic courthouse there on Baltimore Street. You can see some buildings from the college as well. This is an absolute incredible view. And the best time to get out here on Benners Hill and really the best time to visit the Gettysburg National Military Park, in my humble opinion, not that I you know, live nearby or visit almost every single weekend or almost every single day really, is the winter time. Because as you can see, this cornfield right in front of us is totally mowed down. We have great sight lines. Not only that, but all the leaves have fallen by now. It's early December, mid-December. So we have some pretty astounding views here from Benners Hill of Gettysburg. We're looking off to the west right now. We can see a little bit to the north. Later on in this video, I'll start to point out some landmarks that those of you who love the battle, study the battle, passionate about the Battle of Gettysburg, you're going to instantly recognize and hopefully give you a different view of the battle than you might have had just visiting the more popular sites. Off in the distance in that direction, and I do apologize because the zoom on my camera is not the best, we have a view of Oak Hill, that great prominence north of town here at Gettysburg. Now, we are situated to the northeast of town. Just to the southwest of us is Culp's Hill, just to give you a little frame of reference. And we'll get to Culp's Hill here in a few minutes. But you can clearly make out Oak Hill just over there. Oak Hill is very, very, um, anywhere you're in, on a height near or around Gettysburg, you can look for Oak Hill. And it's super recognizable because the front portion of the hill, um, at least what visitors might consider the front portion, it's gonna be the southern face of the hill, is bald. Of course, we have the Eternal Peace Light Memorial there. And then the rest of it is wooded. That's gonna be where Rhodes' division is gonna come into the battle on day one. So Oak Hill is very recognizable and very easy to make out from this position here on Benner's Hill. So like I said earlier, Benner's Hill is going to play a somewhat important role here in the Battle of Gettysburg, especially when it comes to artillery operations. Major Joseph Latimer, a young 19-year-old major nicknamed the Boy Major, he is going to roll a battalion of artillery up here, 16 guns, plus the Rock Bridge artillery north of the Hanover Road there. They're gonna have some 20 pounder Parrot guns north of the road. Some of the biggest guns that are going to be here at the Battle of Gettysburg are going to be just on the other side of the Hanover Road. He is going to wheel his guns up here, and he is part of that demonstration that Yule is to make on the second day on this end of the battlefield. Now, Benner's Hill is a rather exposed position. As you can see, and as you'll see throughout this entire video, the hill is bald. There are some trees, but not much. There's not much cover here on the hill. It's a very exposed position. It's a very easy spot to pick out from the likes of East Cemetery Hill, Cemetery Hill, 
Culp's Hill, and what later would be known as Stevens Knoll. All those Union guns, some 40 guns, they are going to have their sights set on this position. So as Latimer rolls his guns onto the hill here, those Union guns, they are going to have a field day. That's not to say Latimer is not going to put up a fight. He's going to unleash a hellacious, hellacious bombardment here in the late afternoon around 4 o'clock on July 2nd, 1863. Unfortunately, Joseph Latimer himself will be wounded in the arm. He will die a few days later of his wounds. So there is going to be some action here. I think maybe that's why some people tend to not gravitate towards Benner's Hill because there weren't a lot of troop movements. It's not like they fortified this like they did Culp's Hill or, or, or there were these grand infantry assaults or cavalry actions. No, it was an artillery action here that occurred, but nonetheless, an important artillery action at that. The absolute cojones of Joseph Latimer to roll his guns up here. Now, mind you, he didn't have a better spot on this part of the battlefield. This is about as good as it gets. We're about 1,400 yards from East Cemetery Hill, about 1,000 yards from Stevens Knoll, about seven to 800 yards, uh, maybe even less than that from Culp's Hill. So he's in a good spot. There's just no cover up here for the guns. This is an incredibly exposed position. So one of the easiest landmarks to find on the Gettysburg battlefield from any other point in the park is Cemetery Hill, specifically East Cemetery Hill. You look for the big flat water tower tank looking thing and that's East Cemetery Hill. That's directly in the camera ahead of me here. So we have found Oak Hill, the site of some pretty awesome fighting on day one where the Confederates came in and struck there on Oak Ridge. We found East Cemetery Hill from Benner's Hill what else can we see from this position? Now, there are some points on the battlefield that we're just not going to see. We're not gonna be able to see a little round top. We might, might maybe make out a tree or two on big round top, but that's gonna be on a very, very lucky day. And we'd have to be a lot higher up than we currently are. But there are definitely some really, really cool points on the Gettysburg battlefield that we can see from Benner's Hill. So one of the things that really excites me when I study the Battle of Gettysburg is looking at the official reports and looking at the geographical locations, the terrain features that they describe in their reports, and then seeing those very same features for myself. So in the report, after the bombardment, after this great artillery duel in which the Confederate guns are far outnumbered, those Confederates are going to withdraw their artillery, and they specifically mention a bowl-shaped depression in the ground. As we look through the foliage here, now there is a fence. I am uh, now facing private property, so I'm not going to go over there to get a better shot. But as we look through the fence, through this foliage and underbrush and whatnot, we can clearly make out a saucer-shaped depression in the ground. It's things like that that get me so, so excited when I study the Battle of Gettysburg to read a description of a terrain feature, a geographical feature, and then see that feature for myself. So now we're facing toward the southwest, and I do apologize that the camera is facing into the sun, but we are now facing Culp's Hill. Culp's Hill is always super easy to make out, even when there's leaves on the tree, we can see the Culp's Hill Observation Tower, one of those observation towers that the War Department put in back in the early 1900s. If you guys want to learn more about those towers, check out the video I did about them. Now this is also facing private property. This essentially would have been the field that Johnson's division would have marched across in order to get into position to attack Culp's Hill. They would have marched across this field and gotten into position at the base of the hill to make their assault. So this is a pretty cool spot here on the Gettysburg National Military Park. Now again, we do want to be very respectful to private property and the property rights of others, but we can make out one of the old park service markers here that marks where the park service land ends and private property begins. Very, very cool.
Well guys, that's what I got for you today. Just a quick little video about Benners Hill. Such a neat, neat spot here on the Gettysburg battlefield. I highly recommend you visit here. And if you do, bring a monocular, bring a telescope, bring some binoculars with you because you're gonna see some really, really cool things if you know where to look. Hopefully this video helps show you what you should be looking for when you visit here. Also read about Joseph Latimer, the boy major and his battalion here during July 2nd. Some pretty incredible stuff. As always, this is Aaron Smith for Forward Gettysburg. Thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next one.